This is a demonstration of crafting in Divinity Original Sin. Crafting is quite useful in this game. It allows you to make weapons out of base items that keep pace with your character's level in terms of damage and other abilities. The first thing we need to set up is a good place to do our crafting. This is an area here by the North Gate Waypoint and the Mortician Shop, you can see over here. There's a lot of good things here we can use in our crafting. There's a whetstone, an anvil, and a furnace. Also, I like to bring over all these extra crates and barrels to store items in. It's just a good location to have. I also keep my teleporter pyramid here so I can get back here anytime I need. First, we're going to begin by creating the main thing that I use, which is the weapon crafting. To make a one-handed weapon is pretty simple. I've got my ingredients all set up here. First, you take iron ore, drag it into the furnace. That creates an iron bar. With that iron bar, you can put it back in the furnace again to turn it into a steel bar. That steel bar you can place on the anvil. Which turns it into an axe. This is a pretty high level character so the damage on this axe is quite high. My crafting skill level is f uh, 4 I believe. Yes, level 4. So then you can also, this part is optional, sharpen the axe on the whetstone. Which gave it a slight damage buff of about 12. The next thing I'm going to be crafting is in the food area. There's a lot of different food in this game and it has different effects on your characters when you consume it. Anything from stat boosts to vitality boosts as well as just general healing properties. So first you take this piece of wheat. We're going to be making either bread or another way you can modify that bread. So wheat is the first step. You use this mortar and pestle to create a lot of food items. So drag the wheat onto the mortar and pestle. That gives you dough, or excuse me, flour. With that flour, you can use water to create dough. So I've already brought this water barrel over here. You can take the bucket, put it on the water barrel. That gives you a bucket with water. Combine the bucket with water with the flour. That gives you the dough I was talking about. Now you can take the dough as is, put it in the furnace, and that will give you bread. Or you can further enhance it with other items. You can use cheese, or what I have here is tomato. With tomato, you take a hammer, smash the tomato with the hammer, by dragging it onto it. That creates tomato sauce. Move the tomato sauce onto the dough and you have pizza dough. Toss the pizza dough into the furnace and you've got pizza. And we're gonna eat it and see what it does. So that's plus one constitution, minus one speed, kind of a food coma thing, I guess, and plus 100 vitality. The next thing we're going to craft is some armor. This is a cloth type armor I'm going to make, which is probably the easiest armor to make in the game. First, take a needle and thread and combine them. That gives you a needle and thread, shockingly enough. Now, at this point, you can do two different things. You can go ahead and make the armor, which is what I'm going to do. 
or you can drag the pixie dust onto the needle and thread. We'll try that now, and I'll show you why I'm not going to do that. To create the armor, you take the needle and thread with the pixie dust. It's magical, and this would create magic armor. And drag it onto the cloth scraps. I, however, don't have enough skill for that. So I'm going to go ahead and make another needle and thread. Drag it onto the cloth scraps without magically enhancing it. And we end up with polished cloth armor at armor 24. Compared to my robe, that's actually pretty good in terms of armor. It doesn't have the other magical properties, though, so we'll have to see which one's better in the end. And there are other types of armor you can make as well. I'm going to make some boots now. Boots are actually very simple. All you need is a knife and an animal hide. Combine those two items. That gives you leather scraps. Take the leather scraps, place it on the anvil. I know that doesn't really make much sense. And you end up with leather boots. Armor rating of 10, which again has more armor than my boots, but it doesn't have the other magical properties. One of the other things you'll probably be crafting a lot of is arrows. Special arrows in this game are kind of rare, especially early, and with your archer characters, special, arrow, special arrows give you a huge advantage in combat. So this is one of the more simple special arrows, but it's actually a pretty long crafting process. First, you take the knife and combine it with a branch. That shaves down the branch into an arrow shaft. We'll need that for later. Then you take this mushroom, fly agaric mushroom, combine it into a potion bottle, and you get a vial of poison. You can actually use this on weapons just as it is. But to make a special arrow, you have to further craft. Then take the knife again and combine it with a tooth. That tooth gives you a basic arrowhead, which you could just attach to the shaft as is, but we need to enhance it with the poison by dragging it onto it. Now we have an arrow shaft and an arrowhead with poison. We combine them. And we get a poison arrow. You can actually make money with crafting too. As you can see, the value of this item is 80 pieces at the base level. So you can sell that to vendors for more than the general supplies usually. Finally, we're going to look at crafting some various potions. The most basic potion is the Minor Healing Potion. You could take the Penny Bun Mushroom, which are probably the most plentiful mushrooms out there, and combine it with an empty potion flask to get a Minor Healing Potion. You can use that as is with plus 81 vitality, or make another Healing Potion for two. With two, you have to combine them together and you can get a bigger potion. That gives you a plus 199 vitality large healing potion, which is actually quite expensive at vendors. So it's worthwhile to go ahead and make as many of those as you can, as opposed to just buying them. To go ahead and wrap it up here, the way to find all these different recipes in the game is by finding books and then just reading them yourself. You have to keep track of the information in the books and just combine the basic items that they describe. Usually each book has enough information to create one item and then you take that knowledge and combine it with other books you find to create more complex items. Currently there's no way in the game to keep track of all these different recipes yet so you either have to write it down or just memorize it but there might be some sort of system for that coming in the game later as it's still in development. With just a few points in crafting, you can make a lot of items for every character in your party, so you only have to really invest in it on one character. 
I find level two crafting to be indispensable in the early game because you can create a lot of items that you don't have access to at that point. Thanks for watching and now go ahead and go try to combine all sorts of items. There's tons of hidden combinations in the game.